In today's video, I'm going to be answering the question, does a frozen final salary pension still grow? Okay, this is really important for you. Any of you out there who are trying to understand should you um, or what is the value of your defined benefit, DB or final salary um, pension um, in the United Kingdom. Okay, so it's really important to understand that your final salary pension is one of the most valuable financial assets that you likely have. Doesn't necessarily mean it's the biggest or it doesn't necessarily mean it's the smallest, but say for example, you have a house which is worth a million pounds and you have assets in your bank account which are worth a million pounds. You might also have a final salary pension pot worth say 200,000 pounds. Now you might look at that and say, oh, I'm worth 2.2 million and I have 200 grand in this final salary pension. Oh, I'm just going to cash it out anyway. It's a small part of my assets. I want everything to pass on to my family. I understand my spouse will only get 50% of the pension if I die. I would rather pass it on to my kids. Um, all very good rationale or potentially good rationale as to why someone might think they want to complete the transfer out. However, you have to understand that with your final salary defined benefit pension in the UK, you can get better performance inside a SIT by investing the portfolio long term. So for example, if you had a balanced portfolio, circa 60, 65% equity, you would expect that portfolio to grow 8, 9, 10% um, per annum over the course of the next 10, 20 years based on past performance. Past performance is no guide to future performance. You could have two years in a row which are minus five and then the following year after that could be 25%. The long term average of the equity market is closer towards 10% um, for an equity portfolio like that. However, that is not guaranteed and there is no guarantee you're going to have growth. You could have the next decade could be flat. I, I highly doubt that. The way the markets are going, I doubt the next decade would be flat. But in comparison to your final salary scheme in the UK, yes, it does continue to grow, your frozen final salary scheme, even if you are now a deferred member. And this is what makes the scheme so valuable. And if we go back to the FCA and the TPR and we remind ourselves of their stance, on this, they believe that the majority of people should not complete a final salary pension transfer. So that 200K in that previous example before, okay, it might not be your biggest asset in the world, but that 200K is guaranteed to grow um, for the rest of your retirement in line with the scheme's um, indexation factors. Now, indexation within final salary schemes differs dramatically. Some use IPI plus XYZ, some use CPI plus XYZ, some have a cap, some have no limit. It's really important to understand not everyone's pension is the same. If you want to have a conversation with myself or one of our senior financial advisors, you can get in touch below uh, using the WhatsApp link to have a quick chat with myself, or you can book in uh, using the account link to find a date and a time just suitable for you um, in your time zone. If you want to have a call straight away, you can also call our UK office number. Someone will put you through to financial advisor um, and you can have a quick chat with them. So. Even if it is one of your smaller assets, it doesn't mean that you should just consolidate it anyway. And this is why the FCA has done so much work with the pensions regulator to ensure there's very strict guidance on completing final salary pension transfers and that every final salary pension transfer must have advice from a pension transfer specialist who is authorized and regulated to provide that advice. Here at Cameron Janes, we always work with a trusted third party independent pension transfer specialist on all DB inquiries and advice. Here at Cameron James, we think this is excellent because one, the person you're getting the advice from is independent from Cameron James. We will be advising on the pensions and the investments as part of our two advisor model. However, we will not be advising on the suitability of the transfer itself. So what this means is it can actually create a bit of a Chinese wall system in the fact that we're not the ones who are advising you on the suitability of transferring out or not, because also we'd be the ones who potentially be managing you for a period of 10 years on an ongoing basis. You could argue there'd be a slight conflict of interest there, but irrelevant of conflict of interest, we wouldn't even be able to do it here at Cameron James. We must use the independent uh, pension transfer specialist, um, as I mentioned earlier. So yes, your pension pot will grow, the frozen one, your final salary scheme. It's not always in your interest to transfer it out. The majority of people potentially shouldn't um, transfer their pension out in the eyes of the FCA um, and the TPR. Now, you might be saying, to me, okay, so Dominic, why does this video even exist then? Um, uh, why is anyone even considering to transfer their pension out? Well, everyone's situation is different, okay? I come across clients and the, the phrase that no, no shoe fits the same foot is completely true with financial advice. Everyone has different goals and objectives. Some people might want to retire at 50 or 55 or 60. Other people might want to retire later than that. Other people might have huge um, uh, issues that they need to release capital or whatever. So everyone has a different financial situation. And a lot of people, as I mentioned earlier, 
A lot of people don't like the idea of only 50% of their pension going to their spouse in the event of their death. And God forbid, if you and your spouse were to pass away, uh, there's normally um, the capital would not pass on to your beneficiaries. Some schemes will offer a 25% to any um, beneficiary under the age of 21 or still in full-time education. Again, it's all in the T's and C's of your 40 page CETV document that we would need to obtain for, from your saving scheme for you. But there's a range of different reasons that people might have what they would deem to be good transfer rationale and good reasons of why they want to transfer out. Now, to spoil the party, I can tell you now that any good authorized and regulated pension transfer specialist, the majority of reasons that clients think are a good idea to transfer out, they're not interested in. Because what they're focused on is, yes, you can transfer to a SIP, yes, you'll have a load of flexibility, but it's not guaranteed growth. What you have over here with your final salary scheme is guaranteed growth. So how, in many instances, can an authorized and regulated pension transfer specialist say, I think it'd be advisable for you to move away from a guaranteed income to move to a non-guaranteed income um, uh, for life. So in our, in our, what we see in the industry, possibly nine out of 10 cases are um, declined or the advice is to remain inside the DV scheme and not to proceed. Now, here at Cameron James, we do have the ability to work with people on what's referred to um, as a retained client basis, but this is on an individual case-by-case -case basis and has to have thorough review um, from our compliance department before we're able to proceed with any client who's had a negative outcome report um, from the pension transfer specialist. I hope this has been a useful video for you today, uh, recapping uh, probably many things you've heard from me already um, about final salary pension transfers. But as always, please like and subscribe below to let YouTube know that we're doing a good job and to be sharing the content with more people in a similar situation to yourself. And as always, stay safe with your UK pension assets.